that makes me Hey everyone, welcome to Jazz Biz 101, where we take care of the business so that you can get to the music. Uh, my name is Peter Lin, one of the co-founders of Yardbird Entertainment. We're joined here by my partner, Abel Morales, who's uh, working the camera over there. You can't see him, but we'll get him to chime in later today. And uh, we also have our very, very first special guest, Lance Bryant. Yay, first. <laughs> it's always good at being first. It's, yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a first for the first time. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're very happy to have him here today. He's an amazing saxophonist, vocalist, arranger, composer, uh, all around great guy. So um, we work together on many different gigs. Uh, one that I always look forward to is the one uh, over at the Fountain Baptist Church. Yes. Uh, where I guess you help organize the bands. The, the well, band that mainly the uh, the horn section. Horn section. Yeah. You were actually born and raised in Markham, Illinois. Yeah. Right. Uh, you received your bachelor's music from the Berkeley School. Yeah. Uh, Berkeley music, College. Yeah. Ber Ber Berkeley College. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be confused. Yeah. Boston, Massachusetts. You are actually the musical director for the Lionel Hampton Big Band. Yes. Correct? Right. Um, and you also been touring with Abdullah Ibrahim yep. as well. You've been subbing on Round Midnight. Uh, there was that one called Swing. Swing, right? Yeah. Um, and the most recent one, uh, actually it was Shuffle Along and then Shuffle December, Along. Harry Connick. Oh, uh, yes. The Harry Connick show. It was like just one month. Oh, that's uh, that so was, cool. It was a blast. It was fun. Yeah, so that's just a little bit short of a bio. You know, if he wants to talk more, he'll talk more about it. Um, but one of the things that actually he's been doing more recently is his uh, video series called Living Jazz. Right. And um, the premise, I believe, uh, from what I've gathered, is that living the life of a jazz musician and kind of like all the little side notes that come with being a jazz musician. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There's floods of instructional videos on YouTube and mm -hmm. people talking about reeds and saxophone stuff and right. harmony. I just want to talk about, you know, something a little different is, mm -hmm. is our life, you know, and it was, it's just the audience in my mind, it was geared towards people who are interested in jazz, um, not necessarily musicians, but um, people who are new to jazz music or mm -hmm. jazz audience who might be, you know, interested in what our life is like. And um, and I do it through the perspective of humor, so. Yes. And uh, it's kind of uh, an attempt to humanize, you know, our situation. You know, sometimes people may think, oh, jazz is this heavy thing and it's this serious thing that, uh, you know, I don't know if I can get into it. But, you know, when you come, you connect with people with humor, it, it just kind of, opens things up and makes everything a little easier, you know, for a connection, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. why that's why I love so much about the show. When yeah. um, when I was watching some of the videos, it's like this humor that's mixed in with the informative side. Yeah. And it's also very uh, inspirational as well. I mean, you sing, you play, you act, you <laughs> you do this whole thing, you dress up, you know, as well, different characters. Like, it's, yeah. it's, really, it's really cool to see. And I think it's a, a good way to reach out to a wider audience yeah, besides well, just musicians as well. When you have no budget and you're just kind of doing it on your own, you kind of have to we do everything. <laughs> <laughs> we totally but, get it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, so far most of the audience has been mostly musicians only because the way Mm -hmm. uh, I've been promoting it is on Facebook and my friends, my friends and family watch it uh, first. Right. But uh, the whole promotional thing, that's a work in progress. I'm just still finding the audience. So for musicians that of, of a certain age, yeah. <laughs> as you would say, um, they're looking into getting to modern technology. Um, what is your advice to them or what would you suggest doing to get into it? Because I know it can be a little crazy out there in terms of the online realm and just like uh, wanting to do something on that space first of all the the internet is, is just kind of google it as they say you can find out anything you want but also just connect with um younger people you know i'm learning some stuff just sitting here with you guys <laughs> looking at Appreciate your it. your setup but uh yeah i think it's it's great to be open-minded and uh just keep learning you know, you never never stop learning mm. and it'll and it'll Amazing. keep you young you keep know you those young. of us of a certain age did you feel like um like having kids was a 
kind of like help to just keep the mind open to like oh, some of the newer stuff coming in? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, you should see my my son is is my tech guy. He's uh I always uh, give him a call or text him and ask him questions. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's a big help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's cool. I, I love the episode you did with uh, you know Kaylin and. Jordan, yeah, you know, Jordan, yeah. and uh, yeah, that I thought that was really beautifully done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> K- Kayla's yeah. really good on camera too. I did oh. not. <laughs> she's a ham. <laughs> she always has been. Yeah, yeah. yeah it runs in the family. It seems like. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. How do you feel like your past experiences has helped you get to the point that you are at now, both mm-hmm. musically and professionally? I, I, I actually had some epiphanies in the last couple of years mm-hmm. learned a lot and uh one thing i would say is um i learned that it's more important it's very important to uh find your own voice who you are and and not be afraid to bring that out and you know we and a lot of times we learn this music it's such a history and uh we can get so deep into learning how this guy played or how this person played and are oh, you supposed to do this this way because this person did that right and you know maybe later you get around to you know finding your own i would say start trying to tap into who you are you know don't wait mm-hmm. don't wait too long you know uh, another realization i i think i've had is that some of us do a lot of side man work and it's not absolutely necessary that everyone has to be uh, a solo artist don't stress out too much if you don't have a solo career Mm. you know Um, this music even if you're a side man or a side woman a side person you're still you're still uh, as much of a part of whoever you're playing with you're much a part of that music right you know that's a couple of of things Um, working with Abdullah Ibrahim Back to finding your own voice, working with Abdullah Ibrahim, I really saw how he uh, had a lot of faith in doing doing him. You know, you think about his piano playing. He he never tried to play like her, his contemporaries, like, right. you know, McCoy or anybody. He's not that kind of a player. Hmm. But his thing is his compositions and and what he does in the background of his compositions. And he's comfortable with that. And he, you know, he really developed that. And that kind of, you know, I saw it. They kind of made it a lot of sense. It clicked with me. Oh, when I, I see. You know, mm-hmm. and he's, we'll be, we'll be up there struggling with, we play Skippy. And that's a hard nice. tune. <laughs> so hard. We'll yeah. be up there struggling, sweating, trying to play. And everybody has their chorus. And I look over at Abdullah and he's like, smiling <laughs> not playing a note i was like okay it's okay for you not to play take a solo and then he'll play the last chord boom at the end and we're up there sweating bullets but you know that's you know that's his thing and, and he's found his his niche this music allows for that and the fact that it kind of demands that you find yourself you bring yourself to the music what is your advice as to how to find your own voice because i think one of the main things that's being kind of taught in school is kind of like, okay, we're going to play it in this way. You got to learn these solos Mm -hmm. and you have to learn this theory. And I think the combination of all can be a little overwhelming Mm -hmm. for young musicians, especially they think they have to get it done within those four years. But this, as you know, it's a lifetime music, right? Um, So what's your suggestion as to how they filter through all of this information that's coming at us through, yeah. whether it's through education, whether it's through like online, just social media, mm-hmm. like how do we just filter that all out and focus on finding our own voice? Yeah, well, it's a good question. It is important to learn all the basics. Certain things are not so important, but at some point you're gonna have to find what speaks to you. You'll hear something and you'll, you'll feel like, wow, that really cuts me right here in the heart. You know, go down that path. You kind of, kind of, kind of stick with that for a while. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is to don't forget that where you came from. You know, the music that you listened to and your experiences before 
even before college, mm-hmm. you know, your, your whole family background, you know, yeah. that's important because that's also who you are, you know. Who you are as a person didn't just start in, in school. I think that's why I love so much about your life as a professional musician now. It's like you still incorporate a lot of the stuff that you grew up with. And, mm-hmm. and then you actually make a clear point mm-hmm. <laughs> actually on your bio that that's what, you know, that's how you present yourself as yeah. well. Like this is my life experiences. Mm-hmm. And I think that whenever I hear you play at church, it's like, the people really feeling <laughs> what you're playing, you know, and I think you have such a deep connection with your audience. How do you go about achieving that without, I guess, like oversaturating it with what you feel like it should sound like? You, you know what I mean? I, I would only say honesty. I mean, honesty. You, you can only be who you are and you have a certain sound and feeling inside, you know, you just, just go with that. I mean, that, there are some times that, you know, I, I do make an effort to connect with an audience, but it's only so much I can do is, without, mm. you know, not being honest, you know. Uh, questions that we were going to be asking a lot of people that we're interviewing is, when did you feel like the scene started to shift in terms of um, the kind of gigs that were available out there? Mm, late 1990s. Uh, early, you know, very top of the 2000s um, when there was less and less uh, touring to Europe. Uh, mm-hmm. the Europeans uh, started developing their own jazz musicians and uh, they started bringing over less and less bands. Also, 9-11 kind of was an abrupt mm-hmm. change uh, and there was, there was a lot less, lot less work. It was around, around that time oh, period yeah. And in the dying off of a lot of the the uh, elders, you know, uh, in the music, so things started to change around, you know, turn of the, you know the two thousands. Yeah, I started. That's that's when what, what I noticed, you know. Yeah. Was there a yeah. big shift from, I guess, uh, from performances to more institutionalized uh, kind of performances mm-hmm. like what how, how's your feeling mm-hmm. about because from what i gathered so far is that there's been a big shift between like people used to rely on club dates and studio work mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff to kind of sustain a performance lifestyle mm-hmm. and now it's more wide very like you know there's not as much judgment as there was before about playing different styles of music oh. <laughs> and being open you know yeah. um so did you so how do you feel about that how do you feel like that changed over time as well it's more of all of that uh back in the mid to late 90s Mm -hmm. uh all of that was still happening i think the recording industry kind of went down first uh probably in the 70s or 80s i'm not sure but in the 90s there was just more uh jazz clubs there was more wedding bands there was you know uh more traveling um and and it seems like around the same time more more musicians were staying in school longer getting doctorate degrees and mm-hmm. and the whole academic thing seemed to pick up, pick up. throughout the 2000s yeah. and so that's you know I, i've lived in boston for a while and uh and I was looking around saying, wow, the, the only scene is the academic scene here in, in this city, in Boston. Mm-hmm. Pretty much the, seems like the only way a musician can make a living is teaching, you know. Yeah. And a lot of guys in my age, we, we wonder, you know, all these, all these kids coming out of school studying jazz these days, what are they going to do <laughs> other than teaching? It's, that's just going to be it. Yeah. And I suppose you can, you can make a parallel with classical music. It's probably the... Probably the same. You yeah. Know. So you saw that happening when you were going to school. Like already kids really just focusing so much into getting a degree and not really no. knowing exactly what's going on. Not you, while I was in school. Oh, no, you were in school. Yeah, no. Later. Yeah, later. When I was in school, we were we were thinking, oh, we got to go to New York and get a gig. You know, I talk about this in one of my videos. You know, everybody was like, yeah, we're going to get out of school, go to New York, play with Art Blakey or Freddie Hubbard or somebody. Um, and it was like the degree, oh, who needs a degree? I mean, you know, that's, 
I, probably yeah. not all my contemporaries thought that way when we were in school, but mm -hmm. certainly, you know, quite a few of us did. And then, um, you know, now through a couple of decades later, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. that's very important because musicians, you know, need need a, a steady work and a, and benefits, and you know, you know, they need to teach. You know, yeah, understood. And it's it's a funny thing because now um, some of, some of the difference differences that I observe with how younger people learn this music is I I, I see how my daughter learned the music, and she mm -hmm. has you know. Back in the day, we would listen to an album, and we would listen to this album for months. This one album mm -hmm. for months. Now, you when you want to learn something, you go to YouTube, and you got like a thousand versions of this one tune, a yep. thousand, you know, like a hundred albums by such and such. You know, it's it's completely different. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, do you, do you feel like, I guess there's pros and cons to that as yeah. well, right? Because that, that goes back to what we're talking about, about focus, mm -hmm. right? How do you focus on you know, all this wealth of information and yeah. just pinpointing what you really uh, want out yeah. of it or what you want to do, you know? Um, so I guess like listening to a record like so many times. Oh, it's, yeah, you, wanna, you get it ingrained. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's a little bit different. Well, maybe yeah. the younger mind is just faster now. You know, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I would I wouldn't speak for myself <laughs> there. Yeah. How do you juggle everything that you do between working as a musician, the family? Because I know you're a family man. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know that you uh, like to go and participate in the community when you can. Uh -huh. So, so how do you manage your day? How do you, uh, you know, oh. put that all together? Yeah, it kind of depends on what's going on at the time. Um, mm -hmm. If, if, you know, if I got some traveling to do or if I've got some gigs that I have to mm -hmm. learn somebody's music for or if, if it's quiet, you know, when it's quiet, then I, I, I like to practice in the mornings, the first thing, um, mm -hmm. and, and break, have, have breakfast and eat and then do some, do some um, you know, some work on work writing or some mm -hmm. making some connections through uh, uh, social media and then get back to practicing in the afternoon. And, you know, um, it, or, or, you know, when, when I have someone's music I have to learn, you know, I spend more time with that or sometimes I'm, you know, it's busy with other things. It just mm -hmm. depends on what's going on. Um, lately, it's, I haven't been had that much time for for the practicing but you know yeah yeah when i think musicians always feel like we could yeah it's, <laughs> it's never work. enough but yeah yeah, yeah. it yeah. depends on what's going on how early yeah. do you wake up just out of curiosity oh my god it's just changed recently <laughs> <laughs> uh it's been around six fifteen, usually seven o'clock seven o'clock typically yeah yeah. yeah, that sounds good to me. Because <laughs> I, you me. know, I got this dog to deal with, and you know, right, right, understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dog will keep you on schedule. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My cat yeah. meows at eight, so eight. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Not too early. Get up. <laughs> <laughs> so just to backtrack for a little bit, uh, I want to talk about your involvement with the Lionel Hampton Big Band. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to find out was, um, you know. The big band experience, how that is, uh, how that shaped your professionalism as a musician, mm -hmm. um, but also about if it's a scene that's still out there that young musicians should try to, uh, you know, take advantage of being in those bands, uh, mm -hmm. how they go about it and stuff like mm -hmm. that. If you could share share your perspective on that, wow, I don't know how much of a scene there is now because. Um... As far as I know, there's not a whole lot of them, but it, it's definitely a valuable thing for a musician to, to play in a big band. And um, it's great for your ears. It's great for your um, uh, your playing, to be able to play with other people and, and, and blend. Um, it's, there are some, I suppose there are some bands uh, out there now playing it's it's just so, so hard because you know ec the economic economics. reasons. Um, Indeed. But you know, if you're a young musician and you have the time, uh, you 
if there's some big bands that you like, you go hang out, go go to the clubs and and just go check them out and introduce yourself to people and just kind of hang around and let them know that you're interested. And uh, a lot of times there, who's ever playing in the bands uh, always needs subs. So, you know, yeah. make, make your connection and let them know that, you know, you're willing to sub on rehearsals. That's probably where it really, really starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, subbing on rehearsals. And uh, it, one thing leads to another, you know, and you'll, mm -hmm. you'll be able to get into some of these bands, but it's, it's really a valuable thing. Uh, when I was younger, I, I heard a, an older musician talk about uh, with the big band, sitting in a big band, how there's nothing like hearing all that harmony, just like sitting in the midst of it. You, you really, you really get in, get it ingrained and, and, yeah. And it's good for your writing, so you know to really hear it yeah. up close like that. I I, so. I know because I yeah. when you arrange, it's like wow, you gotta hear some of Lance's arrangements. They're <laughs> Thanks, crazy good. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think going off of that, that you know what you're saying about making those connections, uh -huh. and it's kind of like uh, some networking stuff, yeah. right? Um, what I, I'm a numbers guy, so mm. <laughs> what metrics, like what percentage would you say? Uh, opportunities have come out of like big bands for yourself because there's so many um, people there right to make mm -hmm. connections with versus like a small group gig where it's yeah. like just a couple of people well, but in a more intimate setting so yeah positives and negatives to that but uh, yeah a lot like probably mm -hmm. probably 75 percent 60 to 75 percent of my my uh my work, my opportunities come from playing with guys in big bands. Wow, okay. But the other side is that you get kind of pegged for being a big band player. So, you know, and that's, <laughs> that can be the only kind of calls you get after a while. So Yeah, no, I totally understand that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that happened to me yeah. back. Once I got with Lionel Hampton Band uh, for a few years, that's kind of back in the mid-90s, it was almost all calls I got was from playing for playing in other big bands so mm. but it but it kept me busy though you know yeah yeah, yeah that, that's actually interesting like um, that goes off like this idea of uh, branding yourself as mm -hmm. like a certain type of musicians yeah. so um, now you say that like you know you get known as like a big band musician yeah. what was one way that you can kind of like break that cycle and kind of let other people know that uh -huh. you do other stuff besides just yeah being well, a big man's. Oh, it's just kind of try and try and get your own gigs, and mm -hmm. again, you know, ha kind of hanging out with, you know, uh, going to other people's sets, and you know, just I don't know, I don't have the best answer for that, but yeah, take just, part of the scene. Yeah, you gotta mm -hmm. take part in the scene and network with the cats who don't do big bands, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And was there anything you wanted to add that um, you feel like? You want to give advice to a young musician that's uh, starting to consider getting into uh, maybe playing jazz as a career or mm -hmm. at least adding it into your lifestyle. Uh, what's one piece of advice that you feel like would be very important, especially mm -hmm. in this now day and age? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Stay versatile and open minded. Um, is There's no one way that the idea of being a jazz musician at least in my mind is is kind of almost it's i don't want to say non-existent anymore but <laughs> it's not much out there you know so yeah yeah that's okay we can be real here you know yeah yeah <laughs> for sure you know that i think that's the purpose of just you know, doing yeah. all this for sure, you know? Let well, stay, know. stay focused while you're still young. Stay focused before you um, uh, have a lot of overhead in your life. You know, keep your expenses low and, and stay focused on, on, your, on your art and craft. Um, mm -hmm. You know, network with people who are doing things, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know... If, if you st once you start to find like feeling like you want to start a family, you know, just which is good, which is a beautiful thing. Be open minded to the, the fact that you might have to do other things to 
to work, to mm -hmm. keep working, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that, that's where the focus starts to kind of thin out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say, you know, just try and get as far as you can while you're young, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, stay focused. And the people who do make a, a great career out of a, a, a solo, as a solo artist, you know, they're, they're few and far between and mm. so you know it's um it's and if if it doesn't happen for you don't feel bad don't don't mm -hmm. you know don't beat yourself right. up you know because yeah. that's that's the way it is you know yeah, yeah that, you know? that's actually a perfect segue into my last question <laughs> which is uh what's your definition of uh success uh -huh. as a jazz musician well for me my my biggest motivation has always been creativity. So if, if I can mm. write something and play something and, and get it, record it and, and see it, hear it back, then that's, that's kind of, that floats me for a while. That's, you know, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, the, the financial thing is, 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 is always going to be a problem. And I've heard older cats, jazz, Musicians say that we we didn't get into this for the money anyway, so you know, mm -hmm. right, right. But uh, if I can make some music with some great musicians, and and keep keep doing that, you know, then I feel pretty good, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I feel yeah. the same way, no doubt about it. Yeah, so, yeah, you that's know, beautiful. You know how it is. We we play some gigs that. Uh, may not make an impact on a lot of people but some great great music happens mm. you know that's no doubt that's yeah. still a valuable thing you know yeah yeah we were willing to do so much to to get that feeling of like that camaraderie and that mm -hmm. uh kind of like outside of ourselves being part of the music mm -hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> i yeah. think that's an important part to uh you know outline to young musicians like if you're getting into this it's like you know, um, thinking about success and fame and all those mm -hmm. things, oh, yeah. uh, it can be a little blinding towards yeah. you know those important aspects that you're outlining. You know, yeah, and sometimes about yourself, you know? sometimes it can make you feel bad if you start if you have mm -hmm. these expectations mm -hmm. and people have expectations for you, and if you don't come up to these expectations of success, you know it can mm -hmm. it can bother you. You know, um, yeah. But you gotta commit. I mean, if you're gonna do this music, it's because you love it. Um, that's why I didn't really uh, push my my daughter into being a, a musician. As I let it be her decision. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't want her to be like, you know, like years later, oh, you made me do this music and it sucks. <laughs> but you know, yeah. it was your decision. Yeah, yeah. But she she she's. She's a she's musician yeah. through and through, you know. Man, yeah. She's she, like me. She sounds great, you know. Yeah. Great bassist, vocalist, if you guys didn't yeah. know, you know. Call her oh. for a gig. Yeah. <laughs> right? thank, <laughs> Put thank, that little input in. Thanks for the plug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much for sure. doing this today, Lance. Uh, really of appreciate course. it. Uh, we'll link to the his uh, Living Jazz series. Uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. We'll link it in the show notes uh, down below in the comments. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I'll do the same for you guys. Yeah, you know? I really appreciate it. So. Thanks for having yeah. me, uh, Peter and yeah. Abel. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. let's thank Abel for yeah. doing the camera work. <laughs> Next time we'll get some more input, unless you got some input now. You, you want, okay, you good? Okay, all right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, join us next week. Uh, I believe we are interviewing Mike Lee next week. Is that right, Abel? Yeah. Okay, I'll get a confirmation on that. Okay, great. So please join us next week, uh, Friday. We be, we'll be releasing these videos. Um, again, the purpose of this is to help uh, musicians uh, empower themselves to take control of their business so that they can get to the music and create meaningful opportunities inside their communities. So uh, let's make this happen. And uh, see you guys next week. Thank you, Lance. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Peace.